We want to welcome you to our city commission study session. We ask that you turn off or silence all cell phones. Uh, meetings are televised every day on channel two at 6 p.m. and midnight and also available for viewing on YouTube. Uh, tonight we have four items on our study session and the first item on the agenda is a presentation by Sister Vicki and DePaul USA. Madam Mayor, or Mr. Mayor and Commission, this is a follow-up to our December 6th meeting, a uh, presentation requested by the Commission. So we have uh, Sister Vicki here, and I'll let you introduce uh, the President. Yes. DePaul USA. This is Chuck Levesque from uh, DePaul USA, and he's the President of DePaul, and he's, he had asked last time to uh, talk to someone from DePaul, and he's the one. So he <laughs> flew in this morning. First plane was canceled, but the second plane oh. got here. So. <laughs> So we'll let you weren't even flying southwest. I was yes, flying was. southwest. <laughs> <laughs> My sister flew southwest for Christmas, and she still doesn't have a luggage. So uh, I felt lucky. It got off on the second flight. First flight was canceled, but we made it on the second one. So, Good. so it's Good. a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to be in the city. Um, as Sister Vicky said, my name is Chuck Levesque, and I'm the president of DePaul USA. I've been the president for almost 13 years now, and in that time, we've grown from one program in Philadelphia to a national homeless services organization present in nine cities. As of the 1st of January, one of those nine cities is Leavenworth, Kansas. And we're delighted to be here. We come from a faith background, but we serve any and all, and we hire any and all, and our goal is to end homelessness and to improve the lives of people who are experiencing homelessness. On any given night, we have about 290 beds across the country available to people. And by the end of this year, we hope to grow to about 360 beds across the country. The nine cities we're in are very disparate. They range from New York City in the east to Los Angeles in the west. Those are the two biggest cities. We also have a presence in Chicago, St. Louis, Little Rock, New Orleans, Macon, Philadelphia, and now Leavenworth, Kansas. We do a variety of things all around homelessness. So when I give an elevator speech, I say we do four principal things. We help people overcome the immediate crisis of homelessness, and that's um, by providing day centers in Macon, Georgia, Los Angeles, and in Little Rock, where people can come in, take a shower, get food, get case management, just get the things they need to survive, um, and then hopefully engage in our case management, which is really excellent. And that case management is designed to move people towards independence to housing of their own. The second thing we do is help people improve their economic status. So we have a variety of social enterprises, a cleaning company, a, uh, a small affordable housing program, and a very successful thrift store in Macon, Georgia. Um, that provides some jobs. Um, we also do um, hope link people up with businesses and employment uh, opportunities in the private sector. It's not what that's not really what we're best at, to be honest with you, and it's a real challenge. But we try to find people jobs and help them make that transition to independence. The third thing we do is improve people's health. So we uh, we started the first respite in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for homeless people. So that's a place where homeless men, in this case, could leave the hospital, and instead of being discharged to the streets where they don't recover, they'd come stay with us, and we'd find them on new housing. So we're in the process of building the first medical homeless uh, respite in Macon, Georgia, in Middle Georgia this year, and we'll have 12 beds for homeless men and women. And then the fourth thing we do, and this is the most important thing, this is the antidote to homelessness, we help people attain and sustain housing. So we have permanent supportive housing, which is housing you can stay in as long as you're lease compliant, and we wrap social services around it so that people take their meds, people clean their apartments, people go to the doctors when they're supposed to go to the doctors, so that they remain in the house. Because once we get them in housing, we don't want them to fail. You don't want to have to rehouse them. We want to keep people off the streets. So we have permanent supportive housing. We have transitional housing for people who just need a step up and are able to make a transition to the private housing market afterwards. We have housing for homeless students. We're one of the first agencies in the country that have worked with homeless college students. We do that in Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago now. These are kids who have money for tuition but no money to, to live on. So we've been providing housing to those students. And then we have affordable housing. We've built some beautiful duplexes in Little Rock, Arkansas. We've rehabbed housing in other cities. So we do all types of housing, and that's really what will end homelessness, is the availability of affordable, attainable housing that also people retain. And you have to provide the services for people to retain housing. So Sister Vicki and this group of people here have created this incredible program called Leavenworth Attainable Housing, and they have asked to become part of DePaul USA, 
Um, they come out of the same kind of faith background that we come out of, and there's a nice cultural mix here, and my board unanimously accepted uh, the, the request to become part of DePaul USA, so we merged on December, January 1, and I'm here to learn about the program today. I visited the houses that, uh, that the program will operate, and hopefully we'll meet some of the people who live in them tomorrow, and our goal is to really grow a great program in Leavenworth, and I want to assure you that the money we raised in Leavenworth for projects in Leavenworth will be expended in Leavenworth. We just raised $2.25 in Macon, Georgia to build this respite I mentioned before. And we're also going to get 16 apartments out of 82 being built by the Housing Authority. That money is earmarked, the $2.25 million. We know who gave it to us, the foundations, the individuals, the faith communities, and every expense we document um, against that 2.25 million so we can show our donors, which are the foundations, the individuals and the faith communities, exactly how their money is spent. But we are a national organization, so we will provide the bookkeeping, the insurance, we'll do all these things. Leavenworth Attainable Housing does underwrite some of those costs as part of our national organization. I want to be very transparent about that. But when we have a capital program to build and, and create housing, we will spend the money here in Leavenworth. And what we love about this is the double bottom line. Getting people into housing, as I said, is that antidote to homelessness. But also, we improve neighborhoods, we beautify neighborhoods, we take houses that are empty and derelict and make them attractive community assets. So we love that double bottom line of our work and we look forward to doing it here in Leavenworth. Yeah, I appreciate it. The only question that I had right now uh, is how do you address the need for transportation? So in, in big cities, we have public transportation, which we rely on, and we'll give people like our students free transit cards. In other cities, we've bought bicycles for people who can bicycle to work. We're open to any and all solutions. Part of our um, part of our faith background, uh, our, we draw our inspiration from Saint Vincent de Paul, who said, "Love is inventive unto infinity," and so that just means that we're called to be super creative in our work. So if we would have to buy a car for somebody, that is possible. I mean, we will do what it takes to get people to succeed. And we know that with housing, people will need employment. They need access to employment, and that means transportation. So I understand there isn't a robust public transport system in Leavenworth. So we'll look for solutions to find people, to get people to where they need to go for their work. Thank you so much. Any questions from the commission? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just a few. And um, Mr. Lusk, I appreciate you coming out uh, to speak to us uh, tonight. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your organization as a whole? You said you raised $2.5 in Macon, Georgia, that area. Do you mind sharing well, what you know, guys have? I emailed our audit to the city manager this afternoon. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but we're independently audited, so I'll provide all those financials. But going into fiscal 23, which is a January to December year for us, like the calendar year, our total budget is $10 million across the country. $8.4 million is for operations in those nine cities, and $1.6 million is what we'll spend on our capital projects this year, and that includes some projects we hope to do here in Leavenworth. Mm -hmm. About 80% of our budget is uh, for program staff to deliver the services I mentioned, and then to provide program uh, supplies, and that's largely rent subsidies. Okay. The rest of it is just the operating costs. We're about 100 employees nationwide. Uh, 55 of those will be full-time, Majority minority employment, majority minority uh, um, program participants as well. And then the other 45 people will be part-time or temporary people in different projects. Um, okay. Every city has a director. Sister Vicki will be our director. We want to hire a case manager here as well. And then they all report to an executive team that is based in our national headquarters in Chicago. It's a really small team, about six people, to run this national organization, but we try to keep our admin costs low. Last year, they were about 11% of our budget, which is considered very good for a nonprofit, and then we plow our money into our program. Mm -hmm. Our funding stool has three legs. 55% is what we call earned revenue, so those would be government contracts. So we do okay. get FUD, HUD money, Housing Urban Development money. <clears throat> we get money from the city of Little Rock, for example, for our shelter there for our day center there. So we have 55% earned income, and then 45% is divided between individual giving. So we have a robust development team that raises money from individuals. That's about 20%, and then 25, 20, another 20% would be foundations. So we have a development team in Chicago that writes grants. 
our grants range from about half a million down to even a thousand dollars. And that's where I was going next with my question, so yeah. you answered that. So I, I yeah. appreciate So we'll that. continue to do that and we'll provide that service for, for Leavenworth as well. But obviously, Sister Vicki and the team have personal contacts that will be critical in, in freeing up those, those uh, foundations. But dollars. you have a, a development team that's constantly working on getting yeah. more funds coming in. So it was very okay. exciting to me this afternoon when I said, okay, now we need to apply to. I named two different grants, and he said, well, we'll do that for you. I said, oh, my God. And I like this. That's, 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 that's the thing. The yeah. hardest thing about raising money is raising for that administrative yeah. time that you need to be able to have someone who applies. Yeah. It takes yeah. a lot of time and effort to apply for those grants. Yeah. We have one a director um, of the development team, and then one person who works on individual giving and one person works on grants, we're hiring a new communications person to do all the electronic communications and all our, our newsletters and publications. And then we'll be hiring another grant writer this year to, because we're going so quickly. So can you tell me, this because one of the concerns I think that probably all comes to all of our minds initially is, okay, if, if, if Sister Vicky's, you know, her team, if, if they're not taking care of a property or something, mm -hmm. you know, what's, we don't know you guys, and, you know, what's that going to look like? Are we, you know, what are we signing up for potentially? Um, and so I was just curious if you could speak to, you mentioned you guys beautify yeah. homes and, and, you know, neighborhoods. If you maybe speak to that um, for the project that Sister Vicky's talking about with sure. us, um, what that would look like for yeah. you guys. So I think the best example would be uh, what we did in Little Rock, Arkansas. So there's a day center called Jericho Way, and uh, it's out about three miles from downtown a in a call like a micro neighborhood um, that's been very disinvested in, in over the number of years. So there are some really rundown houses and lots of vacant lots. So we worked with the land bank and got three or four lots around Jericho Way, and then we hired a local architect who designed absolutely beautiful duplexes that we built. They are about uh, 700 square feet each side. All new appliances. Um, we had uh, a very faith-based builder who gave them um, the most beautiful finishes you can imagine. And um, we have placed, uh, we built five of these, all raised private funds, 500,000. We built each one for 100,000. And we put them down in these empty lots, and it just made a huge difference for the neighborhood. People, you know, stopped and said, could you build these in our neighborhood? <laughs> and they looked so nice. Um, and so we're, if we were able to get the funding and the land, we would invite this architect to come here and share those designs, um, but they will give <coughs> not only the resident a real sense of wealth and, and well-being, but they'll also brighten the neighborhood and, and really be a great investment in the community. So we did that, and then we also went to other neighborhoods in Little Rock and bought empty house that was just destroyed, fix it up, <laughs> put a person in there who's been there five years, he's employed, thriving, we have to do the same here. And then, uh, and I appreciate that. Then ongoing <clears throat> maintenance. You guys have a, a national maintenance team. No, nope, we around, do or? it locally. So we okay. so um, we hire local handymen. Um, we have to figure out who that would be in in in, in Leavenworth. I don't think Sister Vicky wants to be doing plumbing. I mean, the sisters have great skills, but I don't know if they're plumbers. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we need to have somebody on, on call. But I will say to you that I'll be happy to give you my personal information. That so if there's ever a problem with property, you can call me directly. Um, I also go out to all of our cities, and I'm really big on you know taking negative space and making it positive physical space. And so I, I want. At one time, I had a decree that every one of our houses had to have window boxes because <laughs> I thought it made everything look nicer. But they did, guys didn't take care of their plants, so uh, we don't do window boxes anymore necessarily. But yes, we want everything to look really nice. Okay. And, and you know, be in that positive. And just one last question. Thank you very much for everything you're um, sharing here. Um, how long did you guys? Maybe you mentioned it. How long have you been around again? So DePaul um, has been around for 14 years. I've been here 12 and a half. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cool deal. And tomorrow we're taking one of the houses we own. And what I said to him is, I want you to tell me, how do I make this look better than it looks right now? Cool. All right. So. Oh, that's great. I appreciate it. Those are the questions sure. I had. Thank you very much. And I'll leave, I've given the mayor my contact yep. card. I'll leave more cards, and you can call me directly on my, on my cell phone. And Sister Thank Vicki, you. how many uh, full-time staff members are we looking to have here in Leavenworth? Well, right now we'll have two. Okay. I think the fact that the Sisters of Charity is so involved in this uh, says a lot because you have such a good reputation for all of your properties taking care of yeah. them and taking care of people too in, a, in an organized manner, you know, that is good for our community. So 
I feel comfortable about, very comfortable about this, and I think it's just such a great resource to have you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do appreciate that. You guys have done some amazing work already, so we want to just add to it and help be part of the solution to reduce and end homelessness and improve community, improve neighborhoods, and provide people with hope and opportunity. Um, Sister Vicki and everyone that's here in support, I um, just want to say thank you all for your hard work, your prayers, your giving, uh, just the time that you're investing off into this project. Uh, I'm definitely in favor of moving forward with this project, uh, whatever we need to do as a commission uh, to make the decisions. And thank you for traveling and taking the time out and coming to present to us today. Yeah, the, Commissioner yeah. England, do you have anything? No, no. Thank you very much for coming all the way over here. Where'd you come from? Chicago. Oh, wow. He said our wind wasn't as bad as Chicago. No. <laughs> <laughs> wind <blew beer. laughs> Hope you have a good flight back. Thank you. Yep, thank same you. travels and thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda, continued discussion of American Rescue Plan Act funding. You can all can feel free to... Uh, leave if you'd like to. <laughs> you can stay if you want to. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, we can uh, keep going. Um, Mr. Mayor and Commission, as we move through 2022, an uh, uh, ongoing theme of some study sessions and some regular meetings was the American Rescue Plan Act funding. As we moved through the year, the Commission provided consensus and approved certain items. We had uh, a number of items that we moved forward um, but didn't uh, take any official action on. And then there were some other just uh, projects that we discussed in passing. We provided three or four updates last year. And as we got toward the end of the year, it was clear that we needed to sort of see where we are with the, with the funds um, as we continue to uh, plan for the expenditure of the remainder of these funds. So the spreadsheet that you have before you is just the program overview. I think the two most important columns are the first column, which is the budget line, and then the ARPA balance line. Uh, we did include some actuals that we spent to date, um, but we intend to uh, spend the budgeted dollars in the approved projects fund. So just briefly going through those, the approved projects, the sewer plan improvements, one of the three of those has already been complete. That's the bar screen replacement. Uh, we still have the trickling filter number two, and uh, which the team is probably two-thirds of the way through uh, being able to put that out uh, for bid. There's quite a bit of work involved there. And then finally, the uh, going to the screw press from the belt filter press um, uh, is, is a big uh, part of that project, too. Fire truck replacement has already been uh, purchased, although we won't have it for about two and a half years, but <laughs> that's already through there. The refuse, <laughs> yeah, the refuse program changed set aside. We've uh, altered those numbers a little bit here and there. We've been able to narrow those in a little bit as we've gotten some hard numbers, but that's pretty consistent actually from where we were to start. Uh, fire suppression and ADA grants, we've had quite a bit of interest. We have yet to have uh, the first one pull the trigger, so we'll see where that goes over the first part of the year now that we're past the, you know, the holiday season, maybe some businesses. Mm -hmm. And I know Penny is... Uh, continuing that process to get some of those grants. Quick question, uh, Paul. Do you yep. have a number how many businesses acquired about it? So we've had half dozen to ten, okay. something about that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll circle back with them and see uh, if they haven't, why they haven't, and what can we do to get that, that okay. going. Woman Aquatic Center upgrades, that's actually going to come in probably about half of the number there. Um, we're going to redo the kiddie pool area and some new features and some aesthetic work and some pump work and some pipe replacement, but we're probably looking at about half that cost, so that'll be um, a little bit, but I didn't want to put that in there yet until we have those, those bids in front of you. 
uh, traffic calming uh, pilot project. So we do the 4630 represents uh, the firm that's studying the, the north, south, and east, west streets right north of the high school, and we'll bring a recommendation to the commission um, here right after the start of the year. So cool. I know the commission is excited about that one, so we'll keep those funds in the budget. Uh, City Hall condensate pipe replacement, 300000 is about half the total project. The rest will come from CIP, and that's essentially replacing all the piping in City Hall that was not replaced during the renovation, uh, which was about 20 years ago. And then the two, um, one approved um, in uh, July, July 12th, mm -hmm. the police radio encryption, and then the City Hall HVAC unit. Going down to the potential projects, uh, the request was from uh, Sister Vicky's group for $600,000. That remains in a potential project line. Uh, Youth-related program, uh, just briefly, um, I think we, I don't want to speak for uh, Mayor Wilson and the rest of the commission, but I think we've moved past at this point the Boys and Girls Club idea. They've had some change in leadership. And I don't think they're looking at expanding within the time frame that we have for these ARPRA funds. Um, it was going well, but uh, I think with some leadership changes there, I just don't think we're going to be able to get that turned around in time. Uh, at the February 7th meeting, the City Commission will hear a presentation from uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Kansas City, or of Kansas. Um, and so uh, Mayor Wilson and I had a preliminary Zoom with them and wanted to get them in front of the Commission as we continue to focus on some potential youth-related um, projects. So you can see that's a, a considerably smaller amount of sum. They don't require the physical space that Boys and Girls Club is, but um, we'll bring them They're here on February 7th to present to the commission. Okay. Uh, we have the relocation of the Riverfront Community Center or the Parks and Recreation offices. Uh, we've talked about a couple times. A small expenditure there is we do have a, a layout for you all, um, and we'll, we'll sh uh, present that at an upcoming city commission meeting, um, what that could look like and then the Wilson Avenue widening project. If you throw those uh, in there, then it, it, it is a negative number, um, but keep in mind that Wilson Avenue or any of the other of these projects uh, could be shifted to CIP funding, federal funds exchange dollars, um, economic development dollars if Wilson Avenue project is tied to uh, economic development project in that area. So these are just uh, to give you an idea of where we are with those funding. Numbers. I did want to talk about two other quick ones and the other discussed projects just to come full circle on those. The solar panel for the RFCC. So we did get the numbers back, um, and I'll present those to the commission so you have them. We've been kind of going through them, and it, the return uh, for the surface area that we can use is not that great. Um, even in the peak months, you're looking at about a 20% um, energy reduction. In the non-peak months, meaning that where there's less sunlight, more cloud cover, shorter days, it's really pretty low. Um, we're also concerned about uh, at an X period of time having to replace those um, because of the historic nature of the building you're confined to the gym roof and so with that smaller amount of surface area again we'll bring this to the Commission and do this a little bit more but I wanted to give you that thumbnail as we had a we had an analysis done uh, on some energy savings and what it would look like um, I just have a question mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole idea of using the solar panels was that we could save money. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to use them elsewhere, like at the service center, to save the sure. to save money there? We, we could do it. The, the problem that we keep running into is having enough part. space. Um, the service center, you're probably looking at that front lawn or something like that, but we could certainly look at that. We have a pretty good idea now based on square footage and our uses. We can probably run the model ourselves. Um, and so we could look at some other city facilities, but it didn't seem like the community center um, was as uh, productive as we thought, as we'd hoped it would be. That's too bad, because it was, you know, that if we could save the money, if we could save money and mm -hmm. cut down on the Right. Using, using energy, that would be good. So that's a good idea. We can look at an alternative location to see if, um, because the energy needs are mu also much lower at the service center. You, yeah. don't, you don't have, um, so you could, you know, you may be able to, break even a little bit easier out there. So uh, we'll do a little bit of work on that. And then the new weight and cardio equipment, um, that can be accomplished in the CIP. That can be phased in. Looks at if you're going to do the whole all weight and cardio at the community center is about $110,000. So really the, the purpose of this was to kind of go through the spreadsheet, uh, where we are, give you an idea where we are. Um, I know we heard uh, one request for the housing project. We heard the follow-up tonight. Um, I don't know if uh, now is an appropriate time to have that discussion. If you'd like to um, 
direct us to bring it back as a separate agenda item. I'd open this up to the commission uh, at this point. Well, I know I'm definitely in favor of moving forward with the housing project. Um, yeah, I'd like more details about it, but yes, me too. Yeah, I'd like to get some more details if we could, kind of see what that refined. Um, mm -hmm. we got 600000 in there right now. I'd kind of like to see a refined, you know, maybe update on what that looks like. And also, um, to DePaul's point, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to know what their thoughts are and maybe other areas of revitalization in, in Leavenworth, you know, if we're going to put money into it. <clears throat> maybe we put a little bit more. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Just like, just give you mean more like details. somewhere around like North Leavenworth or some of the areas where there's older housing? Yeah, where he talked about, they actually mm -hmm. kind of proactively looked and like, oh, we could do this and this too. I, yeah. I wouldn't mind hearing more about, well, what would you guys, you know? That sounds interesting just, to find some of the rest of our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If, if we could get a good swing at it while we're doing it, just it's, my thought, but... Yeah. Sounded like he kind of did, they do both, that they work on new that's, properties and, and also. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounded like. Because um, the sisters already have several houses right now mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that, that need work. There's probably there's a potential, I'm, I'm assuming, maybe to phase those two, do some build and then look at some for renovation or, or some, some ideas with that. Maybe. But definitely, yeah, I think we're all Because the 600000 yeah. is not a plug number. That was the specific request from the group, just so, okay. so you're aware okay. of that. And I remember when the uh, when Sister Vicki came and they asked for the 600000 I remember they, they framed it as, we would like to use $600,000 of your money. I think it was specifically to build two <laughs> yeah, that, duplexes. Yeah, yeah, it was tied yeah. to two specific building projects. But is it to, to use it as in a loan or, <laughs> or you just need the money? <laughs> we just please need give the money. it to us. Uh, what we would really be looking at within the 600 would be building the two um, sure. duplexes. One would be at 728 Potawatomi. That one's a for sure because we own the 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 land now. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one, both the things that places we're looking at are right in that same area. It's all northeast Leavenworth that we would be looking at. We're not looking at any other place. So we'd want to do the two duplexes. As I said, what we need is places for individuals because we don't have any of those. Uh, then we would hope, uh, if, if possible, because we're going to go after some other money too. That's why I, we talked about those two foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, we would want to do at least one other building. There's one building that I'm really <clears throat> looking at, again, in the Northeast, but I don't have it yet. Um, it's one that I think we could put three units mm -hmm. in, and I don't think the rehab would be enormous. Um, so those, are the, those would be the highest priorities. Build sure. it, the duplexes, and then um, at least this one other building that we, I think, could buy at a reasonable price and rehab within that 600. So is the 600,000 specifically for the duplexes and then the potential build? Right. Okay. Yeah, the duplexes right. for sure, okay. because that would right. be four solid things. And it would be things that are new, Correct. look good, et cetera, yeah. you know. So, okay. Sister Vicki, so, um, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Was that all put together uh, before you guys kind of merged with DuPaul? Was that yes. your plan? Yes. So yeah. Sister Vicki came to Little Rock and visited the duplexes yeah. and, and saw them. that and wa wanted to bring it back. But this is locally derived. So we're, we're here to help, but gotcha. Okay. the Sister Vicki's yeah. lead. Okay, okay. What about, okay, I'm confused, that the, the land out, out by the guidance center, what? That down the road. Oh, okay. Because that would be <laughs> so this a is 20 for, unit thing. Okay. This is and for four or five properties you are working mm -hmm. with that you have or will have. Yeah, right. And what I was trying to get at was so you're looking at the 600000 as to a grant from building. the city. Correct. Okay, not a loan. Correct, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it did confuse me a little bit back on the 6th when you said we want to use $600,000 oh. <laughs> for money. <laughs> Okay, here, use, use it, give it back use later. Use it give it back. Yeah, give it I back. don't give back. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give it back in another form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for clarifying okay. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So do you want anything more on that? Do you want anything written? I, I mean, definitely some more, you know, maybe more of a detailed proposal on what that would look okay. like. As you, I know you're that limited probably in information, but that would be great. Better. You bet. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So I'd open it up now with what's here, if there's any questions, comments, um, any direction for staff. 
Um, I think we're moving pretty quickly, which was good. I was, you know, concerned at some point uh, with the ARPA funds having uh, the dates that they have, but I think we're in, in really good shape with the projects that we have right now, and we yes. feel comfortable as a staff moving forward with what you have, but certainly if there's any other commission direction. Uh, yeah, I know we're going to be having a meeting uh, with Big Brothers and Big Sisters on uh, February the 7th, but I'm definitely in favor of, you know, allocating the $200,000 for youth programming. Uh, whatever some we decide form. to use it, yeah, 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 make this investment in our kids. So, yeah. whatever program decides well, to come in. We've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. it's not, this is not anything new. Correct. We, we have done that in the past, yep. obviously, with other entities. But, and they have um, some <clears throat> exact cost per, yeah. uh, per program participant and some of the returns and success stories. Yeah, and, that's what I'd be interested in yeah, seeing, yeah, some yeah. of that they information. Were, a lot of how it, the program's changed over the yeah. last 10 years and a lot more active case management and um, some really good uh, information that they're uh, prepared to share on the 7th. It sounds okay. good. I was a big sister for several years, so I know what a good program it is, but it, yeah, I'd be interested to hear how they've changed. Yeah. Okay. It, yes, what is, is there a set date this money must be obligated by or used by? Right, so you have to have it obligated by the end of 24 and spent by the end of 25. I think it's 26. 26 now. You have to have it encumbered yeah. under contract end of 2024 and 2026. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. I think we have the guidance we need. If, if you have any questions as we move forward, please just let me know. No, I appreciate you bringing it. Yeah. As we kind of see what the priorities and where we are each time. So. Right. Yeah, were we in favor of the Wilson Avenue project, or are we going to look at it more in detail? Where's Wilson yeah. Avenue? So Wilson Avenue is uh, backed by Zephyr, Heatron, and Henke. And oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's right. We that's were right. working on the updated design. Um, it's a pretty big hole right now and so as we see where woman really comes in where we end up with the ADA grants um, and then as we get into budget to see if the city can then come up with the remainder through another avenue to, to go forward right now there'd be about a five hundred ninety thousand dollar I got you I, I don't think we'll we'll that we have to make I would yeah. like mm -hmm. to keep that as a priority definitely yeah we'll okay. we're seeing what kind of situation they yeah. are over there okay yeah. all right thank you um, next item on the agenda, state legislative agenda for 2023. Madam Mayor and Commission, as we approach the start of the state legislative session each year, um, my office brings forward some of the legislative items uh, for 2023. I think the first and most important thing to mention is that we don't know what the session is going to bring until the session starts going. What bills are going to be brought forward? We don't even know what the themes are. I, I had the privilege last week of speaking in my office with uh, Representative Proctor and Senator Pittman, and I have Representative Johnson Thursday, and we also have, I'm trying to get in touch with Representative Bueller, we have some new representatives after redistricting, mm -hmm. and they sort of echo the same things. Here are some of the themes that we could see, but until we get into the session, it's really unclear what the priority items would be. So what we do uh, during the session is we'll continue to monitor the bills. Uh, we do have good relationships with our state representatives. Uh, well, the, the existing one, Representative Proctor and our state senator, try to build those relationships with the other two representatives. Monitor those bills and issues that come forward in the House and Senate. Bring those bills that have positive or negative effect on the city to the city commission for support or opposition. Sometimes we do a written testimony. Um, every once in a while we'll go down and testify <laughs> on behalf or against a bill. Um, and then per the City Commission's goals, um, we'll bring, make every effort to bring those requests for those letters of support or opposition to the Commission as specific agenda items so that those can be brought forth in the most transparent manner possible. We build our state legislative agenda off the Statement of Municipal Policy from the Kansas uh, League of Municipalities. That uh, municipal policy statement is included, and it includes more than 100 issues in six separate categories. So we will not go through all those. Uh, but they do have 10 priority items, and those 10 items are, are what, we, what we focus on um, through the lens of what's the best for the city of Leavenworth. So the first one is home rule. The city, uh, what we monitor, we monitor um, issues that would affect the city's ability to govern itself. Uh, the elected city commission, the city of Leavenworth, is the most appropriate legislative body to determine what's the best way to represent the residents of Leavenworth. You were directly um, elected by the residents of Leavenworth. Every two years, the majority of the governing body is before the residents for election, and so this system provides the ultimate in terms of accountability and local control. So that just goes to show that we look for erosions in local government. Is the state attempting in any way to uh, limit your ability 
uh, to, to act on to behalf of the residents. Right. Uh, so we'll bring anything uh, that we think may have an impact on that to you for your consideration. Uh, a little bit more tangible is the countywide sales tax and use tax. The current formula, which has been in place for more than 40 years, divides countywide sales tax is defined in statute. The proportion of the tangible property tax levies made by such a county and the proportion of the population <coughs> of the county. So it's taxes levied in population in your county. There has been a move over the last 12 to 18 months uh, by a certain county in the state of Kansas to change that, whereby the county would hold all of the countywide sales tax, and it would be up to them, their discretion, what portion would go to which cities. That's a control method. Um, most of the cities don't want that changed. I don't know right. if it's going anywhere, but the league thought enough of it to put it in their priorities, and I expressed to Senator uh, Pittman and Representative Proctor um, that we're fine with the system as is. Uh, those sales tax are primarily generated in the cities, not just Leavenworth, but all the incorporated mm -hmm. cities. So the city should get an automatic share of that countywide sales tax. That's huge for our capital improvements pro uh, program mm -hmm. each year. So we'll continue to push for um, the statutory formula to uh, send those countywide sales tax funds back to the city. And the county does maintain um, their portion as well. Uh, property taxes. Um, this is pretty vague. Uh, the city of Leavenworth encourages state and local governments to work together to making government more efficient and recognize the need to work together on innovative approaches to reduce reliance on property taxes. Uh, all property taxing authorities, cities, counties, and state school districts, special districts should be equally transparent and have to abide by the same limitations, restrictions, and requirements. Um, I did talk to our legislators about is there anything we hear can the state do something for the appraisal system? Can the state look at something on their end that rather than pushing everything to the cities to do? I think there's, this is just my view of the conversation and, and from what I've heard, I think there is a desire to do that, but it's, it would require a change in the state constitution, which is a heavy lift. And I think that that's, my opinion is that that's pretty daunting um, to state legislative members to um, pursue an amendment to the state constitution. Well, they've done it before. I mean, they've tried to do certainly, it before, certainly. just this so, last year, um, so I don't see why they couldn't if something <coughs> as important as our property tax. So if they do go that direction or if they look to make other modifications, that would be on our radar to bring that to you, yeah. whether it's support, op oppose, or neutral. Uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll keep a track because that is such an everyday issue for our residents is the property mm -hmm. taxes they pay. So. Yeah. Any comments and on that? Another thing is the fund, the fund, the fund that's supposed to be coming back yeah. to help us alleviate our taxes. Yeah, the LAVTR. That sheet needs yeah. to be in there too. It, it can be, um, uh, it's in the league uh, statement of municipal policy. I, I don't I don't see, I, I didn't get the feeling from any of our legislators that it had much momentum, um, but we can it certainly should. continue to push for that. <laughs> yeah, it I, should I definitely agree. have it's momentum. Get enough, get enough votes, yeah. to write letters and such. You know, just contact your, you know. Well, I mean, we get, we get people making comments about us raising taxes here at the yeah. city when we lowered it. I mean, it's a total lie. And then the state with their appraisal system or with keeping money that belongs to us, I think is wrong. And so I think we should, we should push it. And we should let our community know that. They need to push oh, it, Oh, I agree, especially the, the fact that makes they me do mad. get our money and they... Mm -hmm. By law, they're supposed to give it back to us, but they haven't done it in what twelve years, mm -hmm. ten or twelve yeah. years. I, no I agree with Twenty years about it. That if it may be a challenge for them, but yeah, if it's that's what folks are hiding, it's behind, a priority. They both well, are priorities. You know, it, it can be done. So it, yeah, the, the biggest but. issue is our property tax. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Uh, and then housing, sorry, uh, lack of quality sorry. housing across the state creates impediments to growth and economic development. Uh, housing is becoming a huge issue for economic development. You used to see education, incentives, you know, your local schools, transportation, uh, but housing is, is, is a big issue. So the city supports programs that encourage access to quality housing. Entities in the city have used state uh, tax credit programs to bring a diverse offering of housing options, and we support the use of those programs. They've, they've done some work on the low-income housing tax credit, uh, expanding that and making that bigger. I, I think that it's a, it's a cascading effect. If you move uh, maybe population of 55 or 65 and you have a quality maintenance provided, well, then that opens up single-family houses, and so it, it sort of uh, opens up houses uh, throughout the gamut of housing if you have those diverse housing options. So we'll just continue to monitor any changes that the state has and any uh, housing tax credits or housing tax incentive uh, projects that the state may have. 
as we try to diversify our housing base. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, can, I, can I take one quick yeah. step backwards? Just out of curiosity, because you got me thinking. Um, <laughs> so, you're looking at, you know, we're, we, I appreciate the good relationships we have at, at the state level. Um, what method do we have today? And I know we're connected with, you know, um, different organizations and stuff, but how, you know, if we really would love to be strong, avid supporters of some changes in the state level, um, uh, nothing against, you know, Representative Proctor or uh, Senator Pittman, but what else can we do with some other cities in Kansas, maybe that feel the same way that we do, and we know we have more of a unified voice for the residents of the state, you know, for our respective cities. Is there anything else we can do just, you know, just trying to take outside the box a little bit more, like, you know, because... I mean, love and worth. Oh yeah, love and worth like a change. Well, that's great. Good for them. You know what I mean? Like that. I feel like that's a response we'll get. Right. You know, but so in my experience, the, the best way is not to try to join with other completely unique cities. Sure. I think the best thing is to do is to um, get as many local legislators <laughs> on the same page. Whether mm -hmm. that's engaging the Lansing, the Baser, the Tongi, the Leavenworth, and the county representatives, and get that coalition from their voters and from their constituency and from their cities to push something. It's almost like the cities and the county need to come together and push those <laughs> legislators. Yeah. So how, how could we do, do that? that? You know, if we were to help lead the way for mm -hmm. the county and, you know, other cities, I mean, is there a, a way or method we, you know, something we could do if, if the commission was on board with that to, okay, we want to lead by example. <laughs> you know, this is it. We want to strengthen our voice. Is there anything we could do? It's hard to coalesce around one goal. What because what, what legislators always ask you is, don't bring up an issue to me. Bring up what solution, specific solution sure. you want. What can I put in a bill? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because they don't have time to draft or to try to figure out what you want. And so it's almost um, trying to get a consensus of that size is difficult. Sure. But, no, I hear you. Uh, I, hear I you. would suggest that the county is a good place as the umbrella organization to see if they could get buy-in. Maybe the county commission could set up some group that would that could push specific uh, goals in either property tax uh, reform or something like that and then come with a unified voice to the county's uh, delegation. Could, could we invite the county here, I mean, to talk in more of a, like a group setting, like hammer that out and... Um, and I'm could, sorry. I'll yeah. Put spot, yeah. Well, just, not just us. It's the other cities well, too. Well, yeah. So. But like, if if we want to know what that voice needs to look like, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, maybe arrive in a smaller group. Like, hey, this is a maybe a good potential solution that we can convey then to the yeah. other cities. There used to be a group of um, it would be the county chair and the the four mayors, and I think you'd have to see if there's a general consensus. The other thing that's important in property taxes is as different as we would be from Olathe or Overland Park, we're as different from them as we are from Baser because of the extreme reliance on property taxes. Mm -hmm. Baser is a bedroom community. We're a sales tax community. So there may not be alignment on property tax of you between those two cities because of the complete uh, difference in reliance on those revenue streams. So maybe that first to see where they are. Uh, yeah, I, I believe yeah. it's a long road for yeah. sure. But I've gotten very frustrated whenever I yeah. try to find out something, even on the state level. It, it, it becomes very gray, and yeah. it kind of goes off into no man's land. I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous, you know. And, and you're right. It shouldn't just be the city. You know, it should be mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Voter reach so. out to your legislators. Sorry. We, uh, yeah. The other thing that, we've, that we, we used to do is we bring our legislators, our whole delegation here, so all four. And, and we so need to I do that. Wonder yeah. about that too. Yeah, if like, if we, we can like, do that, yeah. we need to do that again. Mm -hmm. So, so we mm -hmm. we've done that in the past. Um, we you usually have to do that in December mm -hmm. before they get into session. Once they're talk. into session, it's pretty tough. But um, mm -hmm. but that's probably a way too. Um, cool. Yeah, I think there's a consensus good. to reach oh, out yeah. to all four of them and oh, say we're really interested in you pushing something at the state level. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, it's a starting point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can draft something up and run it by the commission and, and get it out to all of them. That right so. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then just two quick ones that we individually have tried to uh, work through. Um, and one of them is, I shouldn't say we individually, the Kansas Association of Chiefs, the Deferred Retirement um, Option Program and the DROP Program. 
It's designed to keep KPNF eligible employees working beyond retirement eligibility. What it does is freezes their uh, retirement, um, and then any contributions uh, past that go into a 401k plan, and it's designed so that your officer of 32 years who's 52 years old may put in another five years. It doesn't hurt the city as far as there's no increased KPNF contributions. It's mm -hmm. simply that the city's contribution that you would have been goes into a state uh, 401k for that employee. Um, and so they did a pilot program with the Kansas Highway Patrol. And so we're looking to see if they'd be interested or look at expanding that to municipalities. So um, we'll continue to monitor that one. And the final one, uh, I mentioned this to uh, both of our representatives when I met them last week, is uh, CDL permits. Um, there have been some changes to the exemptions for uh, what's required for a CDL for motor graders, and that's uh, more of a western Kansas thing. We're looking at just having them, asking them to study or look into increasing those exemptions for CDL vehicles that do not leave the city limits. We believe that anything that goes down K-7 or anything that travels outside the city limits should require a CDL. Mm -hmm. But, for example, if we have a flush truck that has to go from the wastewater treatment plant to 10th and Pennsylvania, having a CDL operator for any piece of equipment over a certain weight is tough for us because it's tough for cities to compete, right, especially right now, with uh, delivery services, logistics firms for CDL drivers. Mm -hmm. And so with the cost of training CDLs, um, we actually had to convert some of our uh, refuse workers to just throwers, what we call. We used to, all the refuse workers used to have to have, to have CDLs, uh, but because we couldn't attract that many CDLs because of the cost and the marketability of a CDL, and so we're just asking them to look at maybe it's a smaller classification of weight vehicles, but if it's work done within the city limits, that a CDL not be required so that we could have employees that uh, we deemed have been trained on a piece of equipment to be able yeah. to drive it from job site to job site. Mm -hmm. so I think that $3,500 a person is ridiculous myself. Right. Yeah. And I was so, surprised uh, when I read that. So it's, it's so that's what it costs to get a CDL. Yeah, that's class. How, many, right. how many drivers can you afford? You yeah, know? and it's um, and then you you lose um, them pretty quickly because yeah, they're, they're the pretty marketable at that point, which yeah. you know is part of it. But so I know that was short for a hundred issue policy, but again, <laughs> a lot of these probably won't come up during the session. They they've been in there for years, so these are kind of the ones that we thought um, and our legislators thought could come up. Um, and, and I have a consensus to, to ask them to really look at taking some action on some property tax reform. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be this is great. Thanks for putting this together. Appreciate that. Sorry for putting this No, no, no. <laughs> I'm happy to do Okay. Here, here, here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Paul. Uh, next item on your agenda is the Leavenworth 2030 Comprehensive Plan Update. This will be our Assistant City Manager, Penny Holler. Yes. <laughs> A comprehensive plan. Don't worry, we're going to do this in seven slides. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mayor, Commissioner, so tonight I'm providing a general overview of the city's comprehensive plan and action taken so far by the city. Um, it, it does seem like an intensive topic, but really this is just sort of a, a high-level overview, uh, refresh our memories on what's in the plan and uh, action that's um, happened since it was approved. So if you recall, the plan was adopted in 2021. This was a uh, professionally facilitated document. We brought in uh, folks who do this for other cities and counties. There was a high level of community involvement, uh, meetings, surveys, feedback requests, and the result is the 161-page plan. I'm sure everyone has a, a copy of and uh, knows well. Um, the plan really has two portions. It's the current statistics, which was sort of a snapshot of where we are with the trends, and then it's the future plan, so the city's vision, where we want to go. Uh, most cities will have a comprehensive plan. In Kansas, it's required. Um, Lansing, as an example, updated their 2030 comp plan in, in 2014, so ours just happens to be more recent. This is something that typically a, a city would do every, let's say, 10 years or so, uh, but it's good to kind of refresh what's in there and, um, as necessary, revise. It really is a primary document used for planning and zoning, uh, development purposes, 
that's where this uh, is probably the, the highest use as a reference document, and you'll see it used by staff. As an example, whether a parcel of land that's currently residential should move to industrial, that's really uh, going to provide some key guidance on making those. Um, those recommendations from a staff level, um, although it's also comprehensive. So it's meant to cover all aspects of the city. Uh, items we have direct involvement on, that's public safety as an example, to those that we work with community partners on. Affordable housing is a great example. Public education is another example. The goals are in here but may not be something the city um, is going to take on by itself. So I borrowed this graphic from uh, the International City County Manners Association, um, but they give this uh, example I really appreciate and I thought was relevant of um, going for the 50 foot, a 50,000 foot level of purpose and vision and slowly going down to strategic goals, priority and action items, planning and oversight, and eventually it gets down to the day to day work and that's where it hits the runway. So, sort of a flight analogy. Um, and I thought that was really appropriate to the con comprehensive plan and process. Um, really starting with the high-level purpose and vision, the goals. Um, that's when people want to know why. Why is the city looking at this? Why is the city doing that? And they're looking at the day-to-day -day items. Ideally, there's a, a trend back to, well, here was the purpose. Here's the vision. Here's the strategy in that. Um, so ideally, the work that we're doing um, relates back to that. And then it's always helpful to remind everyone about the classic project management constraints, money, time, and scope. Um, that's really what influences getting something done and the quality of the product in the end. So as an example, if we had an extra $100 million and 25 staff members, we could implement more of the plan faster. Um, so that's, it's really about the priorities. And that's where the city commission comes in, um, in the form of decision making at meetings, the annual budget, goal setting, um, all of that really um, helps define what the priorities are because the plan doesn't prioritize amongst all the goals. It says this is the comprehensive plan, the full vision for the city, and then that's where the governing body um, does the, the hard work of what does that mean? What should we do this year? What should we do next year? Um, so as an example, if you had $100,000 in the budget, is that 100000 public safety or parks, economic development or roads, or 25000 for each of them. Um, so that's really where this can, can come in handy is how that um, can sort out. And from a staff and a commission perspective, I think it's important to realize that this is some of the highest level of community feedback that we get is in the comprehensive planning project, uh, the process. Um, so that's... Um, Whenever we say we want to hear feedback from the community, this is one way we've done that. We've done the work already. So the picture here is actually an example of a kiosk that was set up that says, That's share cool. your ideas for the city, and it's <coughs> open to anyone to submit uh, any information. And that's in addition to the meetings that were held. I've seen, I saw in-person meetings. I saw Zoom meetings when this process was done, um, surveys that went out. So um, this really is that, that high level of community engagement. Um, and I'll, I'll give an example of how this could be used. So um, I'm sure you all get calls every day, and someone um, wants, to, um, wants to bring your attention to a certain issue. And they'll say, I think we should stop spending money on, on roads and, and divert all those funds to walking and biking paths instead. Um, so we can use the comprehensive plan as a tool and say, OK, how does that look in the larger scope of the city? Does that make sense to hold off on one to do the other? Um, as I'm, you know, looking at what's in the plan, as an example, I would say, I think it suggests there's room for both. Um, so that's where um, staff recommendations are likely to suggest um, what the commission could consider for that. Um, and also, due to the high community engagement, um, it tends to avoid um, not having diverse voices at the table. Um, ideally, if we did that good community engagement uh, process, we got good feedback. Um, so we're not uh, excluding important voices. I'll give you an example. Um, I had an advisory board member one time say, why are we spending money on playgrounds anyway? No one I know uses them. I think we all just want walking paths. And I thought, okay, that's an interesting thought. What does the community have to say about that thought? 
Um, so ideally, it provides a little bit of balance um, between multiple needs from multiple stakeholders. Also, I, I couldn't have uh, set up the agenda any better. It really identifies the areas for partnership. So this was a great example, having Sister Vicki and the folks from DePaul here, um, because I think we know the city can't do everything that we want to on our own. We don't have the money, the resources, the expertise. So our comprehensive plan, having goals that can be shared with other organizations, they can look at that and say, this might be where the city's interested in working with us. Um, so that really is one of the items to have that be transparent. Uh, what is the city doing? Well, here's the goals. If there's a way we can work together, I think those are items that, as a city, we'd like to pursue. And then um, I think also it's helpful to know when something accomplishes multiple goals. So if there's a healthy activity and sustainability and ADA accessibility and you can meet multiple goals in there, you know, those tend to uh, make it easier to prioritize. So things to, to consider in that. And then I'll refer you to the 15-page update that was included in your commission packet and is available on the city's website. Um, the typical way that I've seen um, cities go through and do a comprehensive plan update is you lay out all the high-level goals and the strategies and the action items, and you'll do sort of a matrix, and you'll mark everything. This has been completed. This is in progress or um, this hasn't been started yet. And when I thought about providing an update, I thought, I think that misses the action that happens that wasn't anticipated at the time the plan was completed in June of 2021. Um, so what you'll see in your packet actually will have all the work that was done to meet the goals and strategies. And then when it's something that was specifically listed, it's also identified that way as a local action item. So in some ways, Achieving the items in the comprehensive plan are both what we thought we were going to do in June of 2021 and what we've also discovered since then. And that's the role of mm -hmm. if there's a state grant available, and that makes sense. We're going to pursue the state grant that we didn't know existed when this was done. Um, Bird Scooters is a great example. <laughs> Came to the city. Um, we didn't know that was even an option for transportation to pursue mm -hmm. um, at that point in time. So um, really kind of sort of flip the script a little bit on how we're presenting the update, but I think it provides a better picture of what we've done as a city. So the, really the five key points, I think I covered a few of them. The commission, really, it, it's up to you, getting feedback from the community, um, setting the priorities. Uh, the plan is, is really a guide. This is a document that we can refer back to as we have questions or we're trying to come up with new programs and projects. Um, it includes what we need today, which was 2021, and then also what do we need 10 years from now? Um, I've spent a lot of time in uh, you know, planning for parks and green space, and uh, if you don't plan for that 10, 20, 30 years ahead of time, somehow there's houses everywhere, and you go, why didn't someone think to put in a park? 30 years ago. Um, so that's also where it's helpful to keep an eye on where we want to be, not just where we are. Uh, the plan can really inform what we're going to do in 2023. So it's January, we're looking ahead to the new year. Um, this could be something that we um, use to, to look at future action. And then um, I think it's also important from a staff perspective and just a, a setting realistic expectations to look at um, there is an opportunity cost. Um, in uh, choosing one item over another. Um, so, uh, you know, all items have a, have a budget expense and require staff time. It might seem obvious, but it's helpful just to kind of uh, set that, uh, say it out loud. So, for example, when we've had um, key staffing missing, we didn't have a deputy director of public works, we didn't have a city planner, that's in some ways going to affect the speed that we can um, make some achievements on this. Although I think generally we're now more fully staffed, so those things can be very helpful. Although even at full staffing, there's still an opportunity cost because um, this doesn't necessarily reflect everyday operations. So every day there's police patrols, someone's mowing the park, uh, the city clerk is taking a hundred questions and calls. 
uh, trash collection, pothole, that's all the work that's going on every day that we're also trying to do that and then build for the future. So just kind of items to, to keep in mind for the commission. So those are my, my total of, of seven slides. Those are the highlights. I'm available to answer any questions on the comprehensive plan or the action items that have been taken. Yeah, I definitely want to say thank you for the presentation. And I know to the public, I know sometimes it may not seem like uh, you're seeing the investment and the growth in the city, but I definitely want to say the most visible that I've seen is the investments that's been in the parks. I think that's... Um, it's been tremendous uh, growth within the parks throughout, you know, the past few years. And I just want to say thank you to the city staff and everyone else uh, that's moving the city forward uh, because we are going forward as a community. So thank you. Well, there's so many things. I mean, North, North Leavenworth, the, the Northeast Gateway there, that's amazing, too. There's, this is good. Um, I mean, it's important to have a comprehensive plan. Um, I think it was about 15 years before we did this one that we did the last one. And we didn't have very much community support in that. And so there were a lot of things that kind of went off off the plan, you know. And it was good to re come together and have this strenuous process that took over a year to, to get done. But it was, um, it, it was worth it to hear from, our, from the people in our community on what's really needed and how we can move forward to make our community better. So it's it's something that we always need to keep in mind. How does this, when we think about something new, how does this fit into our comprehensive plan, or should it, should it you know? And so it, it's a guideline for us to make decisions as we move forward, as well as the staff. So. When is the next one? I mean, this was an update to the, to the one that was done in 2021. Ten years. The last one, I, I believe it was completed in 2011. That's what I, yeah. I have. So, so um, make it. Oh, I guess it was 10 years. It seemed yeah. like longer than that. So ten, typically 10 years. And then the, what's, what's updated by that time should probably start, be the base to start the new one. You know, because, it, I mean, you, you're doing a lot of work here to, to keep it up to date. You know, and, which I appreciate. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to be probably one of the best things you can use to start the new one. Okay, where are we now? And is, the, is this comprehensive? Is this up to date? Does it consider what we can do, what we can't do? You know, what we have the ability to, to do. And it's, it's a great starting point, I think, for a new one later. So thanks for the work. This was really the Thank full you. staff, so this is all yeah. updates from the department directors and the work that their teams are doing. This is good. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks very much. Pass it good. on to them. Okay. Well, that concludes the meeting. I want to go around to the table to see if anyone have any updates or discussions. Starting with Paul. Uh, a few things I did. Um, the fellow from DePaul did mention he had sent the audited financial statements um, I got that about 4.15 this afternoon, so I'll email those to the commission so you can see DePaul's um, audited financials. Uh, we do have the presentation on the 7th um, that we mentioned, and then uh, had a chance today, uh, Penny and I did, to um, speak with, well, hear from the commanding general, General Beagle, uh, on some of his thoughts for the city, and it was really interesting. Um, his number one goal was um, a, a Frontier Army and Buffalo Soldier Museum outside uh, the gates of Fort Leavenworth, and to hear the commanding general say that, I mean, that could be a yeah. regional destination. And so mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, some members of our staff are meeting with the lieutenant governor here um, in short order. So we'll do everything we can and pull the commission in and maybe get a presentation to see if that's really something that um, that could. I can imagine with a, a new bridge and um, the new 35th and then a new uh, museum uh, right at the entryway to the city uh, could really be something. Um, mm -hmm. So I was excited to hear that. Uh, the commanding general was behind that. That was yeah, that's neat. Need to see. So that's what I have. Yeah, appreciate it, uh, Commissioner Hingler. Uh, nothing. It's great to start a new year. You know, let's keep it, keep the energy that we've got here going now. Yeah. You know, and move it, uh, move it on down, down the road through the year. Mm -hmm. uh, no, just hope everybody had a good Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year and, and uh, very excited about kind of goal setting 
<clears throat> out of the gate where we're uh, sitting right now and just get everything moving. So that's all I got. We have another transit meeting coming up. I right. plan to attend those. And uh, um, Commissioner County Commissioner Vicki Koss plans to attend those because she is a member of the Kansas City Area Transit Authority. So she has to report back to them what we're doing as well. So we're. Um, I'm excited that two buses are here, I believe. Two. One of them was coming. I think they're both, both two of them are here. So the uh, hope is to start in February, maybe with a with um, the start of the transit, micro transit, which will be an Uber type bus. It's not on a fixed route. Um, and um, this is the start of a pilot, really, pilot project. So, um, you know, in order to, I mean, in, if, if, if everything goes, you know, gangbusters, if there's a lot of use of it, then eventually it might become a fixed route. But for this um, starting out, um, the Kansas City Area Transit Authority, and they really recommended, you know, this micro transit to, that you can use like an Uber and call them to come and pick you up at your home and deliver you to where you need to be in the city of Lebmore. It's just in the city of Lebmore. So I'm excited. Yeah. Really and they, you know, people ask me all the time, when is it coming? When is it coming? So um, I think that's, I'm, I am excited. Thank Do you. Have an expected date for the third one? Oh, it, it's or it's in the process. Money. Yeah, I mean, I think it's in the gotta, state. I think it's in Wichita. They got to do a lot. They got to do a lot. And then after they get yeah, here, they got to be. Oh, I, I even after they get here, they've got to be K dot certified, and that takes sure. a while too. So yeah. it's it takes a while for us to get it. But we've got two, and that's I think we decided that we can start when we've got when we've got a couple of them. So anyway. Yep, thank you for the update. Thank you. I uh, just want to say, man, Happy New Year's. God bless. I'm very excited to be part of this great community as we're going forward. Uh, there's some great things that has already been started in 2022, and I'm looking forward to seeing some even greater things in 2023 have been started and completed as well. So, everyone, have a great new year. God bless. Meeting adjourned.